Coming down now and switching gears. New tonight, an exclusive I-Team report. Will a new Ohio law aimed at stopping robocallers really protect you from criminals spamming your phone? The law goes into effect in just a few weeks. But at a time when robocalls are at a pandemic high, will it really work? We sent our lead investigative reporter, John Bedell, to find out. Okay. Hi, hello. Robocalls. Your car is warranted. One says it's coming from Dave. Hello. They're annoying. Oh, here comes one. Nearly constant. Disconnecting something I don't even have. Yeah, exactly. There we go, another one. And sometimes criminal. Hello. Oh, they hung up there. <laughs> well, they didn't want to talk to you. We dialed ourselves into this annoying situation. It's the number, number, number. Yeah. With the help of robocall guru Aaron Foss to help you. You can stop sending those to us now, Aaron. <laughs> sure. Please. <laughs> <laughs> That was a lot. I mean, that's about one every 30 seconds. Foss tells the I-Team data from his robocall blocking app, Nomo Robo, estimates Ohioans got 16.6 million illegal and unwanted robocalls last month. Foss said that means one in five calls made into Ohio in December was a scammer, spammer, or criminal calling. Our definition of a robocall is any unwanted call. His job is all about blocking robocalls from getting to your phone. Yeah, I mean, it's almost constant. But instead of blocking these calls, I had Foss reverse the process and blow up my phone with robocalls from all over the country. This one's in Spanish. When the pandemic first happened, robocall volumes plummeted because all of the call centers all around the world shut down basically overnight. But now, Foss says, robocallers are blasting phones in greater numbers. Over time now, we've seen it level back to pre-pandemic levels. The call centers are back, the bad robocalls are, are back, and it's still a, a really big problem that's really affecting uh, consumers. It's easy to see why people hate these calls so much. How many of them do you get? Lots, probably two or three a week. Average six to eight every day. Robocallers have tried victimizing Mike Hughes using different excuses. Someone has purchased an iPhone on my account and that they have shut it down for security reasons and that I need to dial two to get uh, to security to talk to them about the issue. The social security one has come up several times too. Hello. Criminals have tried targeting Patty Mundy too. So we get a lot of timeshare calls thinking we have a timeshare and do we want to sell our timeshare or it could be car insurance for a car that we even haven't had for several years. The state of Ohio is toughening its robocall laws. Here's what Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost told me about the new law in a one on one interview in Columbus. What it does is it matches up state law with federal law, which means that I can now use um, the tools that are available through the United States code to go after these folks. Here's what else the law does. It makes spoofing illegal. That's where robocallers change caller ID info to make it inaccurate or misleading. They'll make it look like a number you know to make it more likely you'll pick up. The law also increases criminal penalties for robocalls in Ohio if the victim is elderly, disabled, or a military member or their spouse. And the calls don't have to originate in Ohio for the AG's office to pursue scammers. As long as the calls are targeting Ohioans, Yost tells me his office can go after them. My goal is by the time we're done, these robocallers are going to have a sign up on their computer, don't call Ohio. Foss told me the federal and state governments have put more robocall laws on the books over the last several years. And it really has impacted the volume of robocalls. At a peak, it was over 42% of all calls in the United States were illegal and unwanted robocalls. Again, now we're down to 30% which is fantastic. We still got a long way to go, but I really applaud all of the states that are trying to make stronger laws to prevent these, uh, these robocalls from getting through. Hughes and Mundy hope Ohio's new law really does cut down on those annoying robocalls in the Miami Valley. I think it's a great idea because people and older people too, it's harder for them to maybe distinguish between what's a real call and what's a scam. You can create laws, but you can't stop the thieves. I hope they get it implemented and I hope it's a great success. If you get a robocall, you should contact the Ohio Attorney General's office. Ohio's new robocall law takes effect in March. As for whether it'll actually make a difference, we'll be tracking it and see if it's helping. In Dayton, for the I-Team, I'm John Bedell.